Hi, I'm going to take you through visualizing some correlations um, using Python, and we're also going to port over some of the visuals into Power BI. So here's just a very easy, um, nice image that shows the different type of correlations from, you know, perfectly correlated, which would give us a correlation value of a one to a all the way down to something that has no correlation, which would be closer to zero. And then a negative correlation would be closer to negative one. So what are the packages we are going to use? We are going to use pandas for data manipulation, saving as a variable PD, matplotlib, saving that as PLT variable to make it easier to use those functions. Seaborn, which is our statistical visualization library. We're going to use NumPy for some linear algebra. And what I've done is I've used some of the sample data sets in Seaborn with that SNS variable there and brought in a diamonds data set. And we can see the attributes of the data by using that data set variable and using the dot info function, which will show us all the different data types and correlation only works on numerical variables so we're going to just be looking at the numerical variables but I will show you how to utilize some of the categorical variables in your visualization so this is what our data looks like if we're looking at the top five rows using the data set function head which gives us the top five rows so you can see we have carrot we have a categorical variable of cut color and clarity and then the rest of our values are numerical also. So when you are usually looking at visualizing correlations, if we're looking at two variables, we usually look at scatter plots. So here's a scatter plot made with the Seaborn library. And you can see that what we've done is we've created the scatter plot function. We passed in our data, which is data set, which we saved up above. And then we identify the X and Y variables. So we the parameter X is the carrot and the parameter Y is the price. And you can see this scatter plot is quite uh, dense. That's because there's about 54,000 rows of data. So these points are not necessarily represented in the best way. But what we can do if you press shift and tab you can look at different ways to style this scatter plot by adding in all these different parameters. And this gives us information on what each one of them does. So let's like kind of dive in a little bit. So you can see what I've done here is I've made the line width zero because that line width here, which was this white line was kind of obscuring things. And then I've used alpha, which allows us to control the opacity. So I've put that at 0.2. And of course, you can change that to 0.1. If I change that and I hit run, you can see it even gets more opaque. So you can play around with that to get the best visual you're looking for. We can also utilize some of those categorical variables. So we know that uh, our data has a cut for our diamond. So what we can do is change the cut. So what we can do is pass in that cut category using the hue parameter, and that will allow us to visualize these points with our category and change the colors to kind of indicate that. And of course you can add more parameters like we had alpha, we can add that. And we can change that to point two and we can see how that changes the visual. I'm gonna press shift and enter and that's gonna run. And you can see, we can see a little bit of a difference but what you would want to do is definitely play around with the parameters to get the visual that you're looking for. We can also use a different um, categorical such as clarity, which gives us the clarity categories and also gives us a slightly different um, view of that scatter. 
So we can also look at how other values are correlated other than price and carrot. So if we looked at a scatter plot where we're looking at the table, which is the uh, dimension of that diamond, a numerical dimension, and then the depth, you can see there's not a real kind of one-to-one uh, -one linear relationship there. We can also look at two other data set variables such as depth and price and you can also see that the data is kind of just centered around here but we can uh, advance to what we call a regression plot that allows us to evaluate the linear relationship between two variables so we use a instead of the scatter plot what we're using is the ridge plot function we're passing in kind of the same structure which is our data in the x and y variables and you can see that we are given a a line here which measures the linear relationship and seeing how those values are circled around that regression line now this is not a uh, very beautiful visual but we can optimize it for example, we can pass in a style where we look at using that matplotlib variable to change the style to dark background. We can take that same registration, regist reg regression plot and we can just pass in some keywords for our scatter and keywords for our line here where we are using red and using a line width of one for our for our regression line and then we are using an alpha which helps with the opacity and gray color for our edges and white for our actual scatter plot so that gives us a little bit of a different view there so now we've been looking at just two variables, but we may want to look at all of our variable correlations. So what we can do is use a data set which has a data frame function called correlation, and we can pass in this function, which is C-O-O-R, and what we will get is a matrix that shows us correlations on each one of these variables. Now, what I'm looking at now is a Pearson correlation, which really focuses on the linear relationship between all of these variables. But if we are not sure if our variables are fully linearly correlated, we can use a different type of correlation, which focuses more on impact than the linear part and that's called a Spearman correlation and we can see information on all of these things by just pressing shift tab and you can see that's a Spearman rank correlation we can use a Pearson correlation coefficient and quite a lot of different ways to measure our data and you can see that we know that price and carrot are pretty well correlated there the, from our plot here it's quite linear that's why we have a 0.92 and if we use the Spearman correlation the impact or the rank is going to be a little bit higher because you can see it's 0.96 and this the different type of correlations will allow us to pick up different attributes of correlation between those variables next if you don't want to see a matrix but you maybe are more concerned about the correlation of all the variables with one variable such as price you might want to isolate price by passing in this method where we are using the data set correlation and then just isolating price with these double brackets and now you can see that price is uh, correlated with all our different numerical variables in this fashion and the reason we may want to do this is for visual plots so let's look at visualizing a correlation matrix with a heat map 
So we can pass this correlation variable uh, into a seaborne heat map, and then we can get a pretty nice heat map here. Now, right now we have a heat map we pass in the parameter of line width, but if we eliminated these two, which I've added the line width in annotations, I'll just show you what that looks like. So I'm going to copy this and press escape and A. And then I'm going to eliminate these particular parameters in the function. I'm going to shift and enter to run that. And you can see that looks quite different. So next what we're going to do is you can see the ability of adding the lines and the annotations. The annotations will give us the actual numbers. If you press shift and tab, we can see all the different parameters that can go into that. Next, what I'm going to do is just use the method, which is Spearman, and see the correlations there. So you can see a different type of correlation depending on your use case. Last, next, I want to show you how we isolate one variable and then we can see the correlation there. So this is going from negative to positive there for our correlations. We can definitely change the, the styling. For example, I can change this from um, with a C map, a C map parameter which allows us to change the colors and I'm going to change this cool warm and this is probably going to also eliminate our back, black background because we are going to run our um, code over that and you can see for cool we have the blue and then for for warm at one and we can also change the direction which I think would be a little bit better because you can see blue is down here and red is down here on our color bar. So what we can do where we have sort values by price, we can do ascending equals false and hit shift and enter. And now we can see that it goes from the most correlated, which would be red, to least correlated, which would be blue. And one other way to visualize this, which will be a little bit more advanced, would be using our uh, mask to block out all of the correlations that we already have done and kind of make a triangle. And this is what we're doing with this NumPy, using some um, true and false to make a kind of a staircase parameter there staircase visual for our correlations. So let me show you how to pipe this over into Power BI. So I've, I've opened up Power BI and I've brought in an avocado data set so we can see a slightly different visual. I'm going to initialize, initialize the Python visual by clicking on Python and now you need to create the data set so I'm going to add in all the numerical variables that are indicated with that sum symbol. And now I'm going to add those in. Um, now that I have a data set, what I can do is go over to my Jupyter Notebook and I'm going to get the first bit of code here except the data set that I've imported. And then I'm going to copy this here. So I've copied that over. Next I'm going to just get the visual. So I like the staircase visual here that I have. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to copy all of this. And paste it. And the last thing you need to do is make sure you're using plt.show which requ is required in your notebook in your Python script so it will run. So plt.show, which allows us to 
show that visual and let's see run that and see if we have any error in our code and I'm also going to stretch this out a bit and you can see it running in the corner here and now we have our visual for our heat map which looks quite nice and you know in Power BI we can definitely see how that visual may change according to uh, the data set. So we can bring in our, uh, maybe we bring in our type, which is here in that data set. And then we just go here, we create a slicer, we go to type. And then if I click organic, you can see that heat map change. But please remember you need to have this variable, which is type or your categorical variable in your data set of your Python script to have that to run. So you can see that when I created the data set here, I added in type. So that will allow you to filter the visual in that manner. I hope that helps. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.